Hey, James and Jenny, we're here at the kitchen table, and we're good to see, glad to see you. Uh, this is lesson number four. If we're going to be talking about messy relationships. It's good to see all of y'all today. Hope y'all having a great one. Well, very good. Well, I'm glad you're here. We're going to talk about seizing the opportunity to serve in messy relationships. We've been talking for the last few weeks about messy relationships, and uh, you know, we we've all experienced uh, messy relationships at some some point or another. Uh, you know, and when you, when you're in a messy relationship, some of them it's easy to clean up. Uh, you know, uh, we've been talking about some of that. Others have been more difficult to clean up. Maybe some of them are ongoing, but but we just want to talk about messy relationships a little bit. So, James, how would you describe a messy relationship? You know, the Bible describes a messy relationship this way. It says that we are all sinners and, and we have a bent toward uh, being self-centered. That's what sin really means. Sin has a big I in the middle and it's all about me, myself, and I. And when a relationship becomes about me, myself, and I, um, it's a messy relationship. You know, and, and, and what that means is... I'm going to do anything I can. I want my needs met. I don't care who i got to get them from. I don't have to care what I've got to do to get it. But it's all about meeting my needs. It's about me, 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 me. And, and so um, and so that's what we're kind of talking about. And so Paul wrote in the Galatians. We're going to be in Galatians chapter 5 and the first part of Galatians chapter 6 this week. And uh, Paul wrote in Galatians and, and he was talking to him about that, that salvation and being set free from your sin is, is through faith alone in Christ. In fact, he tells us uh, in, in Galatians chapter 216 that, that we believe in Christ and we're set free that way and and then he tells us about how to live out this newfound faith and our freedom in Christ and and, and but but there's a major emphasis that he does throughout here that in, in our freedom in Christ we are to serve one another in love and so we want to talk today in our messy relationships about uh, how to seize the opportunity to serve one another even when the message the relationship is messy okay and so uh, just kind of an overview kind of get the setting a little bit Galatians chapter 5 verses 1 through 12 uh, Paul says that we have freedom in Christ from the bondage of, of the law and uh, that Christ has set us free from that and then he begins teaching in verse 13 that we're not to use our freedom in Christ uh, to indulge ourselves uh, but but we're to live in love and part of living in love he says is we are to serve one another and we're to serve one another in love and then in chapter 6 and we'll look at some of that also uh, he, he offers some very practical ways in applying uh, how to serve one another uh, to our relationships okay and so let's begin a little bit Jenny's going to read for us Galatians chapter 5 verses 13 14 and 15 Galatians chapter 5 uh, verses 13 through 15 okay you, my brothers, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature. Rather, serve one another in love. The entire law is summed up in a single command. Love your neighbors as yourself. If you keep on biting and devouring each other, watch out, or you will be destroyed by each other. Okay. Now, there's an underlying theme here, and, and, and it really is the theme of our our, our, our lesson today is that we strengthen our relationships when we help each other and when we serve each other and we do that in love. And ser serving is a tangible way uh, to love each other. So what does it mean to serve one another? Well, you know, notice what Paul says in, in Galatians chapter 5, verse 13. Uh, he says, uh, brethren, you have been called to liberty. You've been called to freedom. And so don't use your liberty, don't use your freedom as an opportunity for your flesh. In other words, to indulge yourself, but to serve uh, one another in love. Uh, you know, we, we've we all been shopping or we've been out to eat and, and uh, maybe some, you know, you've been somewhere where somebody's been very hospitable and, and you have received exceptional customer service you know you go there and uh, uh and, and somebody's doing all they can to to make your experience as great as possible you know and you're at the restaurant and the uh, the, the server, your server is coming by and making sure your drink is full, that your table is clean, that your next course is coming and, and that you understand what all is going on, if you have any questions and, and so forth. And, 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 you know, good customer service is not about making a sale. It's not even about trying to keep a customer. What good customer service is about is about doing what's right and helping the other person. Now, when you do that, you do, 
produce, you, you do provide good customer service, but it's about taking care of that other person and helping them in that moment that there are. And in verse 13, uh, what Paul says, you know, it, you know, in your liberty, don't use it as an opportunity for flesh. He says, uh, don't serve one another. What he's getting at is don't serve one another. Don't be in it just for yourself and what you can get out of it. In other words, it's not all about you. You know, mess relationships is, is all about me, what I can get, and what, what is, it's about me just sucking everything dry from me. A healthy relationship is not about me. Healthy relationships are about us. U.S. Okay, uh, and if we listen, if we focus only on our needs and on ourselves, how can we ever build a strong relationship with others? Notice what Paul says in verse fifteen: If we bite and devour one another, beware lest you can be consumed by one another. And so, um, you know, that's that really describes a mess relationship and and what to do when you have a mess relationship and uh, and stuff. And he's saying, you know, we don't need to focus only on our needs and on on self, but we are to take care of one another. And so we don't um so so that we will build a strong relationship with one another. Uh, I, I told this joke one time in, in worship service a few weeks ago, and uh, but but there was a woman one day who was pining uh, to her friends that. And she said, oh, there is nothing I wouldn't do for my husband, and it's nothing he wouldn't do for me. And, uh, and all the all the ladies are just, oh, that just sounds so great. You know, tell us your singer. She said, well, you know, um, you know, we've been so good at doing doing that that we haven't done anything for each other for years. Well, that's a messy relationship, you know, and they've been biting, devouring each other. And uh, and so, um, but 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 that's what Paul is saying when he's talking about serving one another. It's not about all about me. It's about us and what can what can we achieve together? Okay, you, my brothers, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature. Rather, serve one another in love. That's right, Galatians 5.13, it just really makes a connection between freedom in Christ and the command to serve, okay? And, and, and did you hear it again? Jenny, read that verse again for us. You, my brothers, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature. Rather, serve one another in love. So, so did you hear the connection between freedom in Christ and the command to serve? Well, what is it? Notice you said you are to serve one another in love. Because I love you, or no, it, it's, it's through Christ's love. The truth is, our, our love compare, compa- our, our love pales in comparison to Christ's love. And so we're to serve one another in Christ's love and the way Christ loves us. You know, I wonder if Paul was uh, thinking about these words. You know, he wrote over in, in Philippians chapter 2, he says, Don't look at only for your own interest, but take an interest in others also. And really, that's what he's saying here in the Galatians. And, and if you notice in Paul's writing, a lot of times he just kind of recycles what he said to one church, he's saying to the other. And that's really what he's saying here and, and all. And, and notice 14, and, and notice in verse 14, um, uh, that, that, that this is what Christ was getting at. Can you read verse 14 for me? The entire law was summed up in a single command. Love your neighbor as yourself. And I think that's what Christ was getting at. We're to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. And uh, and, and so, and then he goes on, you know, in that verse 15, he says, so so don't bite and devour each other because, you know, hey, where are you going to build a strong relationship? You do. So love each other, serve each other um, in, in, in the love of Christ and, and because you're wanting, wanting the best for them, okay? And so we're going to change our focus now a little bit because in Galatians chapter 5, Five verses. I'm sorry, Galatians chapter six, verses one through five. Paul then takes everything he's been saying up to there, and and then he applies it to to the family relationship. He applies it to practical relationships, and and so he gives us some practical advice on how to how to deal with things in, in our relationship. Okay, and so in Galatians chapter six, Jenny, read for us verse one. Brothers, if someone is caught in a sin, you who are spiritual should restore him gently. But watch yourself, or you also may be tempted. Now, uh, even though he uses the word brethren there, it's not just meaning for the men. Uh, it really is an all-inclusive term there. Again, Paul is writing in a formal kind of way. It's formal writing. And so uh, that, that word brethren, you know, in our day and time, you know, he would have written brothers and sisters, okay? And so he's meaning, he's talking to men and women, everybody who's a believer and a follower in Christ, okay? And notice what he says. If a man is overtaken in any trespass, any sin, then you who are spiritual, you know, he, he he's revealing a, a mess 
relationship. Someone has been overtaken in a sin. Uh, they are in need. They have fallen, and uh, they have they have they are not walking as close with Christ as they should. And so Paul is saying and telling us here that we ought to do something. What does he tell us we ought to do? Notice what he says. If if a man is overtaken in sin, he, 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 he's fallen back into sin, then, then what does he say we do? What was the next part of that verse after he says if somebody is caught in, in sin? What should we do? You who are spiritual should restore him gently. There you go. Notice what he says. You who are spiritual, you who are still walking close with Christ. Notice what he says. Kick him to the curb. Bash him. Call everybody up. Make it a matter of prayer and just tell them how bad they are and they're no good and no, that's not what he said. Notice what he said. He said to restore them and restore them how? Gently. Gently. Why? Because they're hurting and, and the natures are going to fight one another. And, and so this is a good opportunity to be able to serve. He says if someone is overtaken in sin, then restore them gently. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, simply because you're walking in a spiritual manner in, 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 in the light, and they are going back toward the darkness. And guess what? There's a, there's a clash there of spirits, okay? And so what you want to do is make sure that you do it gently. You walk up alongside and He's going to tell us how to do that, okay? What does he tell us in verse 2? Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. You know, in other, you know, that's the that's the New International, the the New King James, and other translations said, "Bear with each other." This is bear one another's burden. Let me give you an illustration for a moment. If if you have a supporting wall, this I don't know if this wall back behind us is a supporting wall or not, but but let's say it is. It, it's a, it, say it's an outside supporting wall. If that wall become weak and it's starting to sag and not do what it needs to do. I would, I would not just go there and just knock it down. No, we wouldn't do that, um, because it would, it would do more damage. And, and so, <coughs> excuse me, what you would do is come alongside with the, with the support beam and you would put it there to, to, beside the one that's sagging to, to help bear the load. You would, you would help. Notice it's not carrying the load for the other. It is helping to bear the load with the other. That way, the, the first one that's there that, that's going through the problem can be shored up and strengthened. And then after that, guess what? The, the, the one that came alongside the help will be then removed and then that one is strong enough to keep going on. And that really is what he's talking about here, that we are to do that, that we are to bear each other's burden. He did not say, he did not say that we are to carry their load. If we do carry the load, it's just for a short time, give them strength to get back on their feet. If we are to walk alongside with them, we are to partner up with them, to walk with them and not do it all. And what did he say do that? Notice what else he said there in that same verse. What did he say we ought to carry each other both? Because we would do what? He said, in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. Ah, you will fulfill the law of the Christ. Now, uh, of Christ. Now, what is the law of Christ? Remember, Jesus said, and we've talked about this in the last three or four weeks, um, he said, I've come to, to love you, so love one another as I am loving you. Uh, he says that he did not come to be served, but to serve others. And, and, and so that's the law of Christ. It, you know, he summed it up this way. Go into all the world and make disciples and teach them all I've commanded you. But then he also said this. He said, you are to love the Lord your God with what? All of your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. And... He said, and love your neighbor, love those around you as if they were your very own self. And, uh, and that's what the law of Christ is. And, uh, and so again, he didn't say to, to carry the burden for them, you know, pick up the backpack and carry it. You know, the only reason that you would pick up a backpack for somebody on a hike. Uh, to carry it from if they are, if they are hurt and they could not carry it for themselves for a while, you would help pick that up until they're strong enough again. Hey, now you take the backpack because if you take it and you bear all the weight yourself, Guess what? Both of you are going to be in the same boat. You're going to be, you're going to be both worn down. You're going to both be beat down. And uh, both of them are going to be despondent. And we just need to be, uh, mindful of that. Okay. So you're going to help them out. So that's why he says bear the burden with each other and, and help them out. Okay. And so now we're going to look at ver in, in chapter six, Galatians chapter six, verses three, four, and five. And, uh, and because Paul gives some really good advice right here. Okay. If anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Each one should test his own actions. Then he can take pride in himself without comparing himself to somebody else. For each one should carry his own load. So let's look at that again. Look at, look at verse 3 again with me, Jenny. Uh, tell, tell me what again what that said. 
If anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. So, so, so what he's doing here, he said, he said, uh, don't think you're more than you really are. Okay, don't be cocky and don't be high and mighty. Okay, what did he say there in verse four? Verse four. That we got to do what? Each one should test his own actions. Why are you doing this? You, you want to help somebody out? Somebody's struggling a little bit. You listen. You are not their savior. You are not their rescuer, but you are their helper to come alongside. So you need to test your own motives. Why are you doing this? Okay. And then why? That way you can take pride in what yourself and, and, mm -hmm. and what you are doing, okay? And, uh, and, and what's verse 5 said? For each one should carry his own load. Yeah, each one should carry his own load. And so, you know, so the good advice here is really this. Don't be cocky and high and mighty when it comes to helping somebody else. And make sure you're practicing what you preach and that you really are representing Jesus, that you are not in it for yourself. Because if it's about you and yourself, then it's a messy relationship. Remember, healthy relationships is about us. Not me, it's about us, okay? And, uh, and then he sums it all up in verse 10 about, um, uh, with, with this thought about really how we ought to serve one another. Listen to this verse. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people especially to those who belong to the family of believers. So what did he say there at the beginning? He says, as we have what? Opportunity to do good. In other words, this is about serving. When you, when you see a need, you have an opportunity. It's been presented. Somebody, <clears throat> excuse me, somebody is struggling. Uh, somebody is, is ha being, having a weak moment and all. So you see an opportunity. See, take the, look at the opportunity, okay? And notice what he said about whom we are to serve. <coughs> excuse me. I've got a little sinus drainage happening. So whom did he say we're to serve? Who did he say that we are to serve? All people. Ooh, all people. Even those people outside my church family, even those people outside my Sunday school class, even those who don't come to the same church and worship with me, even those who don't even worship the God that I worship, even those who are outside my circle of friends or those who are outside my family. And, you know, sometimes we, we only want to take care of people who, who go to the same places with us, uh, hang out with us, that, that, that share the same blood with us and the same names with us and things like that, you know, but, but, you know, Maybe those who are most familiar with us and most like us, that's who we want to do. But, but he said we are to serve all people, even people who are different than us. When, when, when God allows you to see an opportunity to serve, you see a need, then that is God saying, uh, James, you have an opportunity. Jenny, this is an opportunity to reflect me and to represent me in, in your circumstance and in the circumstance of others to come alongside them and, and help them and bear witness of Christ to them. Uh, but then he has a special addendum here. Notice what he said. He says, if you have an opportunity to do good, uh, to do what? Do, therefore, uh, to do good to all people. And then he has this addendum. What's that addendum? What did he say there? Especially what? He says, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Especially to your faith family. Now, now you might be asking this question. Okay, so I'm supposed to be serving and helping meet needs and, and see the opportunity to take care of people around me. I understand that. My neighbors, whether I, I know them, whether I like them or not, that's beside the point. I'm going to represent Christ and I want to serve others. And I'll, But why does he say, especially, especially to the household of faith? Well, you know, let, here's one good reason. Anybody ever, anybody ever do good and you get worn out and you feel like, man, am I the only one doing that? You know, um, what does he say that we ought to do good to one another? Jenny, uh, help us out here. What, what, what do you think? Well, like in Galatians 6, 9, you know, it says, for us not to lose heart in doing good. In other words, he said, don't, he said, don't get weary about doing good. He said, because in due time, you're going to reap. And uh, he said, you can get prideful and not see in your blind spot. And so he said, you know, make sure that, you know, you don't get weary. You know, just keep doing those good things mm -hmm. and serving others. Because, you know, you know, sometimes when you're doing good, even though you're doing good, you try, you can grow weird. You think, man, I'm the only one. And so if you have an opportunity to do good and you see somebody, a, a fellow brother or sister doing something, you go, man, they, they sure could use some help. And God is bringing that to your uh, attention. And uh, you might not be reckoned, you might not have ever recognized, hey, uh, I, you know, let me give you an example. You see somebody who's been, um, uh, who's praying for somebody and you, and you can tell they get a little weary of continue praying. Mm -hmm. Then to go alongside them and say, let me help pray with you. 
Let me help you in this prayer. Maybe you see somebody serving and uh, and they're doing something and you're going, they could use some help. God has just brought that to your attention. That's an opportunity to do good. And especially if they are brother or sister in Christ. And so um, that way you don't lose heart because, you know, everybody does. And uh, everybody needs somebody to come alongside. And it's not, again, to do their work for them, but it is to bear up and, 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 and support them and encourage them there, okay? But you also need to do it because, notice that last, Jenny, Jenny just, uh, Jenny said it, you know, uh, you, you can get prideful when you're doing it. Oh, look at me, you know, but somebody come in and say, hey, listen, wait a minute, Bo. Uh, this is not about you. It's about the, about Christ being known. And, uh, you know, sometimes we, we don't see our own blind spots. Uh, you know, um, uh, Jenny, Jenny will point out things to me and, 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 and I tell her, just leave me alone. She don't know what she's talking about because she'll point out my blind spots. And I say, you just blind at the back. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Just kidding. And, uh, uh, and, but, 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 you know, we, you need somebody to help you because so, we don't see our own blind spots. And, uh, and so somebody coming alongside of you can help you, can help you with that. Okay. And so, uh, let's talk about how can we uh, seize the opportunity to serve one another. Okay. And, there, and, and there's about four things we're going to talk about. Okay. And so, um, so what, how are some ways that we can seize the opportunity? Jenny, why don't you go first? Why don't you tell us a couple of things we can do? All right. First, I'll think about how you have been served by others. So think back over the years, you know, what has someone done for you? How have they ministered to you? How did they serve you? And then you could use, you could say, okay, they brought food over to my house. I can take food to people. You know, they came and did my laundry. I can go do somebody's laundry. So think about what, you know, people have done for you. And then think about how you have served others. I mean, you have done it. You probably, you might not even thought about it, you know. So think back over the years and say, how have I served others? What have I done? Have I only served, oh, you know, sometimes have I only served the people at the church? You know, my, mm-hmm. or have I served the strangers, you know? Would I rather serve strangers than people I know? So think about, how, you know, who you've served and how you have served others. You know, a good way of looking at it when you're thinking about, you know, how have others uh, served me? How have I served others? You, you might want to ask yourself and evaluate yourself. Am I a giver? Or I'm a taker. Am I a giver or am I a taker? Um, remember, takers are, are messy relationship people. It's all about me. Givers mean that I'm in it together. We're in this thing together. And so, you know, ask yourself, am I a giver or am I a taker? And uh, in, in my relationships, uh, uh, one last one is this. Um, and it's just more of a practical thing. And, and, and maybe it's a homework, homework assignment for you, okay? Uh, this week, as you're going about your task um, and going about your duties and different things that you're doing, I want you to look for some way to intentionally serve someone. Uh, in whether it's in your family, maybe it's in your church, maybe it's in your community. You know, what's the way you can serve in your family? You know, if you just um, normally sit there and, and, and watch your spouse um, or uh, mom or dad or somebody just cook a meal, you know what you help? Say, let me help you with that. Um, or clean up the dishes or, you know, take out the trash. You know, you know, you know what I'm saying? You know, serve one another what? How, what can you do to fill up their love tank? You know, I mentioned before, Gary Chapman wrote a, wrote a book called The Five Love Languages, and it'll be a good book for you to get, and you can download it online and look at it and stuff like that. But, um, but The Five Love Languages talks about the different needs that each of us have and what fills up their love tank. And maybe you do a, need to look and say, okay, you know what, the, what fills up Jenny need? Let me tell you what, what I know that fills up her needs the most. If, if, when I take the trash off, when I do things where she, she wants access service, she, she needs me to do some things for her life then and that just fills her her love tank and uh, so let me let, let's put her to the test okay what's mine uh, James's is words of affirmation he wants you to tell him he's doing a good job and that you appreciate him and, and that you love him you don't have to tell me all the time but it's you know but it is good to hear you know a good job and things like that but that is mine I do like words of affirmation and uh, and stuff and that's a that's actually a good way of serving one another and uh, and, and and things like that you know but maybe look in your in your church how can you serve you know we're going trying to get back in live person and in, in person worship services you know tomorrow's Mother's Day and we're going to do a outdoor church service you know there's all kinds of stuff going behind maybe you can say hey i can come set up while while we're doing outdoor worship services i can come and help run speaker cables it's 
it's not hard to do, I promise you. All you got to do is just throw it out there and then just plug it in the back. Well, I don't know where to plug it. You know, once we show you the first time, you'll have it, okay? But that would be a way of serving, um, you know, uh, helping helping to do things. Maybe there's somebody um, that, that's, so, uh, that's lonely in our church and you can minister there. Uh, right now, again, you know, um, somebody who is, is home by themselves, you can pick up the phone and give them a call or something like that. You know, just find a way of serving them. Maybe take a meal to somebody and, uh, and, and, and do that. You know, maybe in your community. Maybe you know of a family who uh, has lost their job during the COVID-19 crisis and uh, maybe you can fix a meal and take it to them or give them a bag of groceries and take it to them. Well, won't that be prideful and hurt their feelings? No, it won't hurt their feelings. Uh, they'll be very thankful that God's hearing their prayer and you are answering prayers uh, on God's behalf. Uh, and, and he's working in you and through you. Again, it's an opportunity to serve one another. But, you know, these are just, just examples. Um, Put your thinking cap on and say, and, and, and in prayer and say, God, uh, you tell me to serve others in love. And, and God, sometimes there's people that's messy in my relationship. You know, here's the great thing. Listen, the Bible says when we serve others who are the, the messy ones in our relationship, it's like heaping burning coals of fire on their head and it, and it brings back a point to them, uh, you know, that I don't, even though you treated me messy, I don't have to treat you back messy. If I'm going to still love you. And, and it's going to bother them to the point they're going to go, okay, why? you doing this and it's an opportunity for you to say I'm God says I'm to serve others and love and I'm just being Christ to you and uh, and you know and the last week we talked about that expectation of a transformation and, and that does help you know, but serving does help along that line and, and so but look for an opportunity to serve one another say God you know give me an opportunity to serve help uh, open my eyes to see the opportunities around me to serve okay and so um, you know all that remains for us to do is just simply to open up our hearts to, to God and say, God, uh, flow through me, the river of love. Um, open my eyes to see the needs and the opportunities uh, around me and then go for it. You know, just, you know, if you see a need, God has brought that to your attention for a reason. And so do something with it. Uh, don't sit there and say, well, I wish someone to do something about it. Uh, he, he, God's asking you to do something about it. You, you say, well, I don't have the resources. You probably know somebody who you might can connect the, the, the situation to. I do a lot of that a lot of times. Uh, there's things people come to me and say, James, I need help with it. I want to serve and meet their needs, but I don't have the means to do it. And so what I do is I just resource and connect with, with others and other places and other ways of, of doing that. If you need help with that, call us. Okay. We would love to help you and give you ideas and help you talk through ways you can serve one another. Okay. Jenny, anything else you want to say about anything we've been talking about today? No, I mean, I was just sitting here really going like, okay, who can I help, you know, serve in my family, my church, and my community? So I was getting ideas about. I'm hungry. I wish you'd go fix me something to eat, serve me. I will in just a little bit. Okay. <laughs> we just ate just a little bit. <laughs> it's stuff to serve. And, uh, and all. Guys, we love you. And, and all the stuff. I'll cut you off. I'm sorry. Anything okay. else? Okay. Oh, very good. Okay. Well, very good. Well, you know, we, we, um, if, if you'd like a copy of the book, uh, that, that we're using, I mean, we have copies at the church and you're welcome to them. And uh, just let us know, uh, if you come to church and say, hey, I want a copy of that book. And, we, you know, we'll get them for you. And, then, you know, get them out and have some out tomorrow. Yeah, and and if you want to just say, hey, I'm all fine. Fine. Okay. And, uh, cause we want it. Okay. Cause it's nothing like reading and studying stuff. Okay. Uh, folks, we love you. I'm glad you joined us. I want to have a prayer with you. And then, uh, we're going to get off of here. Okay. Let's talk to God. Father God, we thank you so much for your love and your mercy. Father, we thank you that you said that you did not come to be served, but to serve others. And then you say, go and do likewise. You tell us to go and represent you and, and to follow your example. And so, Father, as we look in our family, as we look in our church, we look in our community, Father, open our eyes to the needs and help us to take an opportunity, the opportunity to do good to all people, especially those of the household of faith. And then, Father, that, uh, we, that we will serve one another. Father, we have people that, that in our families and our, and our, communities and, and father in our circles that 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 this messy relationship it's always been about them father i pray that you'll help us to find a way to to, to serve them in love and uh, represent you and uh, not bite and devour but say hey I'm, I'm here i want to help bear this up because i want you to be strong i want you to get past this and then father i pray that you would do something great and mighty that we can only say god's dynamite power worked in us as he as he worked in us and he's worked through us with the people around us and we're going to give you praise and glory for it it's in jesus name we pray amen Folks, we love you. Thank you for joining us. See you next week.